The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of Pacific Telestations, our employees, or advertisers. Half a day. My name's Chris Malafunction Barnett. You might know me from radio, TV, stand-up comedy, or even social media. I've got something to say about everything. Sometimes I joke. Sometimes I'm serious. But no matter what I do, I'm always malafunction. Welcome to my show. It's going to be one hell of a ball game. Decision 2018. And this year, there are so many hats in the ring, the election is looking like a crown's location. With the Democrats, it isn't a question of who is running. It's more like who isn't. Frank Ogden, Lou Leon Guerrero, Dennis Rodriguez, and of course, Carl Gutierrez lead the four gubernatorial teams on the Democrat side. Leon Guerrero and longtime Democrat strategist Josh Tenorio came out the earliest, announcing their candidacy way back in February of last year, strangely on Filipino comedian Mikey Bustos' YouTube channel. Behind a steady barrage of social media marketing, the team of Lou and Josh has maintained a consistent presence. Senator Frank Hogan, after some rumors circulated, he had the can't find a running mate blues settled on former U.S. attorney for Guam and the CNMI, Alicia Limtiaco. After I mused on the team's cooking ability on my Instagram story, the pair ambushed me at KUAM, bringing me Karun Pika and Latiza and catching the whole thing on camera, leading some to think I was supporting the Ugin Limtiaco team. I'm not. And so this is kind of a message to the other candidates, you know, don't be scared, come by, bring food. And this whole time, former Governor Carl Gutierrez loomed in the background. Late in 2017, a rumor he had asked Senator Dennis Rodriguez to be his running mate was flying around, awkwardly putting Rodriguez on the spot. When Dennis apparently got cold feet, Uncle Carl then turned his attention to KUAM's very own Jesse Lujan, a former senator and host of The Buzz. So I said, how, how can we not be together, Jess? And now we're together because we fight for the same thing. And that's for the real people of Guam. Thank you very much. And after much speculation on just who would be crazy enough to run with Uncle Carl, we found out it would be Gutierrez Berdalio again. Obviously not Madeline Berdalio, but former chief of police and former senatorial candidate Fred Berdalio. Berdalio, who definitely has the name for politics, finished 24th when he ran for senator in 2016. He was always encouraging me and, and telling me, despite my loss uh, as, a, as a candidate for senator in 2016, that he, that he trust and, and was confident that I could really uh, help uh, his campaign. And the latest to come out of the political closet, four-term Senator Dennis Rodriguez announcing his bid for Adeloupe. This is about um, being the Megalahi, the governor of Guam. On the Republican side, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio is holding all the marbles. Although the team of Tenorio and former Senator Tony Ada, the BOTA team, only announced in mid-January, they've been Facebook official for months. And this quasi-political ad has been running for over a year paid for by a political action committee supporting Tenorio's election. And he has dedicated his life to service and keeping us safe. My friend Ray didn't have an easy life. My sign says we call this pork sign. I have a friend named Ray. The LT and his running mate have been able to capitalize on the power of the incumbency. We need to continue to have the same government. Although Ada was voted out as a senator, he was quickly hired as a legislative liaison by Adeloupe, and the duo has taken advantage of as many photo ops and ribbon cuttings as they can. Like I see him, you know, all over the island doing th good things, you know. He's at all the weddings and the funerals. Yeah. <laughs> Statistically, though, the odds are in Tenorio's favor. Of Guam's seven elected governors, five have been Republicans. And since the Gutierrez era, the Republicans have held Adeloupe for 16 years. So essentially, the question voters will answer, is it time for a change? And although every election is different, this election, it's the same old issues for voters. My first number one priority is health. Okay, They need to improve GMH, education, and public safety. All this news I'm hearing is uh, all negative. People dying in the penitentiary and all that. That's the only three main goal I, I want to see improve. 
Crime has been up. It's been all around the news. Um, the roads. <laughs> um, uh, I guess the financial situation with like the schoolings and everything like that. So definitely just putting the money where it should go instead of in useless things, I guess. But like I said, I don't really know. Yeah. It's a lot of issues. Yeah. What do they have to say to you to get your vote, though? My vote? Um, I'm just, I've been, I've been here for seven years. I'm looking for a job. And having got um, a stable job for myself, so. So you're looking for a job, uh, people, uh, candidates, you're looking for a job, part-time, full-time, what are you looking for? Well, um, part-time. <clears throat> so when I see a candidate out there and, you know, with the people and, you know, just being there for us, you know, and our, like giving us that support, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's what I love. What I love to see. What are you looking for in a, in a candidate that will make you want to vote for them? Honesty. <laughs> Someone who's going to be there for the island. Someone who's more about, you know, wanting to improve everything around here and, uh, yeah, what's best for the people here. Honesty and integrity is my primary, uh, will be my primary choice. And Guam's looking for a good uh, governor that can help them to bring up economy and best, you know, jobs too. You know, that's the only thing. I'm not going to say, oh, Guterres not good or Tenor is no good. I mean, whoever, whoever the best candidates around, we can bring a better for Guam. All these people, I want to see them stop talking, do action. One of the big moves, former Caltech administration mouthpiece Troy Torres, whose time with the GOP goes back to the Umpinko Calvo days, now gets his paychecks from Democrat Senator Dennis Rodriguez. Will his understanding of Tenorio's strengths and weaknesses be a factor in this election? I can guarantee you, the people of Guam, that there will be no negative uh, attacks from my campaign for our campaign. And why aren't there any other Republicans running for governor? Well, the party hasn't grown much in the last eight years, and after Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio, there's a big drop-off in terms of candidates with the experience or political machinery to take a stab at Adeloup. In fact, it's been more than 10 years since the Republicans held a legislative majority, but with three incumbent Democrat senators seeking higher office and at least two Republican senators telling me they won't seek re-election because of pay cuts, leadership in the legislature may be up for grabs in 2018. To say the Democratic Party is split into factions is an understatement. You've got the Berdaliocrats, the Latexancrats, Guterrescrats, the Fancycrats, Mike Sinicholas, and everyone else. So the key will be Democratic Party unity, three words that hardly go together. I mean, if the Democrats had fielded any combination of two of their top vote-getters, surely their odds would have improved. And don't forget, many of our island residents don't want to give a vote until they find out what they can get in return. So what if we could get you hooked up with a really nice uh, loan from Bank of Guam, you know, super low interest rate? Say again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the governor to come buy me a big boat so I can go fishing, but, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> he's not joking, he's not joking. It's Masaya small boat, Masaya. Goliath, Masaya. <laughs> so do you think if uh, Luli Guerrero wins, we're all going to get approved for a good loan on Bank of Guam? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Low interest, right? Yes. <laughs> what if we got you, like, in Gov Guam, you know, maybe you throw your support behind a uh, rate scenario? Well, I'm not in Gulf Guam, so, you know. And, that's the problem. we got to get you in. Once you're in, you're in. Uh, no, no, no. That's not, that's not for everybody. Wait, do you have a big family? Do I have a big family? Oh, actually, my, all my kids are all grown up, and they're all both out of the home. Voting age, right? Yeah. Okay, we talk. I'll set up a meeting. I set up a meeting? We'll get you in the fire department. Me in the fire department? I'm too old for that. You make a good fireman. <laughs> they need experience. I know how to put up fire. <laughs> Just because people are willing to talk about the issues doesn't necessarily mean they're willing to show up to the polls and cast a ballot. Well, I like to, but... Wait, so all of that and you don't even vote? <laughs> Stop. You're fired. <laughs> are you going to vote this November? We'll see. I'm not sure. I haven't registered. So. Right now it's at an early stage of the running, right. you know, so we just need to see which uh, which one fits the most suitable for the governor and the retaining governor to provide a loop. So hopefully, you know, when they're campaigning out, they come out with the words that are going to encourage the people to come out and vote for them. 
And just how will this election be different? Well, for starters, this slate of gubernatorial candidates is the most diverse in Guam history. Two of the five running for governor are not of Chamorro descent, meaning Guam may have a non-Chamorro governor for the first time since the federal government appointed our governors for us. You think Guam is ready for either a Filipino, a Caucasian, or a female governor? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, everything's changing around the world, so I think we're ready for whatever has to come. <laughs> you no, know, Lieutenant Governor Rachel Tenorio is, is Caucasian by by his biographical <laughs> but he is local any filipino who's been born and raised on guam or has moved to guam and has been raised here and knows the quality of life that guam offers can offer it wouldn't matter you think guam is ready for a filipino governor oh maybe <laughs> what about you nope um i think it would upset a lot of the the local people they'll think like the filipinos will end up ruling guam like taking over Guam and... So you guys want to take over Guam? No, that's not what I'm saying. It's just they... You're only going to be happy to all the Chamorros are down in the dirt? No, <laughs> I'm just saying I'm probably the Chamorros would want a local a local governor instead of um, another race. It doesn't matter if you're Chamorro or whatever your race is. What they want is finally somebody to do something about what's going on. Someone, it doesn't matter if you're Caucasian, Filipino, Micronesian. As long as that person is willing to work for the people of Guam, that's what's going to matter. What about a, a Haole governor? Do you think Guam is ready for a Haole governor? I think that would be okay. So you think they're more ready for like a white governor but not a Filipino governor? Yes. I would like to see a female uh, as a, our governor. I would like to see a female as our president, but it's really, it's all, it just all really boils down to just what plans what do they have to afford the communities of guam and it's great as far as having a female and i know this probably also sounds cliche empowerment <laughs> but sometimes you have to get it from a, a female's point of view well you know what they say on guam the women wear the pants or the pants suits but who will wear the title of governor come november i guess it doesn't really matter who or what our next governor will be so may the best man or woman Win. The color doesn't matter or their race, it's just how they are and how they act on things. Guam is ready for anyone, any any person um, that can make a change, that can really, really make a change and make a difference, whether it's a female or a male.